So at this EHA meeting, I had the opportunity to present a poster on a pooled analysis of a caliber nib in CLL. And this included data from five different studies from early phase through phase three trials, both in the frontline and in the relapse refractory settings. And really with an idea of trying to understand the efficacy of a caliber nib, specifically in patients with CLL who have higher risk disease. So by higher risk, I mean that patients could have unmutated IGHV, uh, or they could have truly high risk disease, which is TP53 mutation or deletion, so-called deletion 17P. And so the study included over 800 patients with a mix of these different markers. The majority of them had unmutated IGHV, close to 90% of patients. And within the different subgroups, really we were quite interested in the outcomes, particularly for the TP53 aberrant patients, because this is an area where we haven't had as much data for a acalabrutinib uh, as compared to say some of the other BTK inhibitors. So in the frontline setting, we saw with 64 patients with this truly high-risk disease, TP53 aberrancy, uh, that upwards of close to 80% of the patients were still progression-free at four years, which is very reassuring. These numbers look similar to what we've seen historically with ibrutinib, which was developed first in this space, and gives us confidence that we can use acalabrutinib in the frontline setting for high-risk patients. We know from other studies like Elevate RR that acalabrutinib has a very favorable safety profile compared to ibrutinib. So I think this is a very helpful data set for that population. In the relapse setting, patients with deletion 17P or TP53 were over 200 in this, in this data set. And there we had about three years of follow-up and still no median PFS has been reached in the high-risk patients. It's a little over 50% or so still. Uh, so again, giving us confidence we can use acalabrutinib in the relapse patients as well. And then for the unmutated IGHV patient groups, as we expect, we saw very high rates of progression-free survival at, at four years in the frontline setting, upwards of 85 to 90%. Uh, so we need longer follow-up to understand the durability there, but certainly so far it looks very good. And then we also looked at the safety uh, for acalabrutinib in this analysis, and, and by pooling together all these patients, it's a pretty powerful data set of over 800 patients to look at safety, and, and very reassuringly, we did not see any new safety signals with the drug. Uh, we do still see some of the low rates of cardiovascular events, as we expect with BTK inhibitors, but overall, a very well-tolerated drug. And so hopefully this analysis is helpful for people to, uh, to have a more comfortable, you know, large data set of acalabrutinib with longer follow-up, and feel that comfort level with using the drug in the higher-risk CLL patients.